So you want to know which midfielders to put in your Fantasy Premier League side? Well today we're going to go over the top performing midfielders from last season and see whether they generally are one of the top performing midfielders in the Premier League. Coming up next. <laughs> What's up guys and welcome to JNO United bringing the best in football news, entertainment and games and today we are looking at the midfielders that have the greatest goal threat to get you those FPL points. But before we get into that if you're new around here and you're interested in seeing all the 30 days of FPL make sure to subscribe, hit that like button and leave any questions you have for me in the comments down below or on my Twitter at JNO United and there will be an episode where I go to your questions and answer them to the best of my ability. Now before I start talking about the best midfielders for a goal scoring threat in the Premier League, be aware that these are what it says on the tin, the best goal scoring threat midfielders. So Dimitri Payet is not in this list. I'm not saying he's not a good player and there will be another video coming up of the best midfielders for assists and Dimitri Payet is definitely in that one, so don't worry, I will be saying Dimitri Payet is a good midfielder for those of you in the know. But today we are focusing on the midfielders with the highest goal scoring threat. So let's start off by getting into the best player of last season, the player of the year, Riyad Mahrez. He had 37 appearances for a Leicester side that went on to win the Premier League and he did it in explosive fashion. Some people had Riyad Mahrez from the beginning and his price at the beginning was ridiculously low. He was almost fifth midfielder price level and he just tore the competition apart. Him and Jamie Vardy were a sensation last season and if you had them early enough, you were laughing all the way to the top 1% of players. In the 37 appearances he had, he got 17 goals. 17 goals from a midfielder is incredible. You'll be happy for your second or third striker to get 17 goals in a season. So 17 goals from a midfielder is simply incredible. But just to put on top of that as well, 11 assists. Now as far as I'm concerned, the sign of a great attacking midfielder is if he can get double digits in goals and assists. And Rian Mahrez managed that last season. And just so you know how much of a goal threat he was, he had 86 attempts on goal last season. Will he be that good this season? Some people are saying Leicester can still build on it if they keep most of their players. I really think Canty was such a seriously good part of that side that won the league that I worry that he's gone now. Mendy has been brought in, maybe he can fill those shoes. I don't think Mahrez is going to be any less of a player. I'm just not as confident in that team without the key players that got them to that level. But if Rian Morris's price is decent, moderate, around the eight, nine million mark, then he's definitely a great option for your midfield. Focusing on players in the midfield that have a great goal for it, the next person we're gonna look at is Alexis Sanchez. Last season, he only had 30 appearances, and I do worry about his appearances because he does seem a bit fragile at times, and there was the Copper America this summer. But in those 30 appearances, he got 30 goals and he got four assists. 13 goals is a great return. Now, the only downside to it is because Alexis Sanchez had such a great season the season before, a lot of people saw his return as quite moderate compared to what people were expecting of him and the price he had been given by FPL. But he still had that goal for it last season. He had 107 attempts on goal and he had 72 attempts inside the box those numbers are great for a striker, let alone a midfielder. And just so you know how explosive he can be, the season before that, the 2014-2015 season, you're looking at a midfielder that played 35 games, scored 16 goals and got 8 assists, which is a great return for a midfielder. If you captain him at the right time, he can get you some serious points and with the triple captain maybe still being a thing in FPL. I don't know yet because I'm recording this before the FPL website is launched. If triple captain is still a thing, Alexis Sanchez is one of those players that can seriously take that triple captain armband and, and shoot you to the top of the tables. Now a player that potentially saved my early season last year and has a close place in my heart because of it, because last year I was starting this FPL channel, this football channel, and I was giving all this advice and then the way that season started, 
I didn't start as well as I'd have liked to considering I was telling people, look, I know a little bit about fantasy football. So come subscribe to my channel and listen to me talk about it. And then I didn't start very well. One of the midfielders that definitely helped me out was Andre Ayew. Now Swansea are one of those teams that can have parts of the season which they're amazing and other parts where they kind of go off the boil a bit. But Andreo last season he played 34 appearances, sometimes he was playing as a forward as well, which we love out of position players on FPL. Defender that plays in midfield, a midfielder that plays up front, that is all great for us in FPL. Last season he got 12 goals and 2 assists and was at a moderate price, I believe he was around 7 million, which is a great price for a player that's getting you 12 goals in a season. Stoke last season also had a bit of a period where they looked really, really good, beating some of the top sides, and one of the best players out of that bunch was Arnautovic. 34 appearances, Arnautovic got 11 goals and 6 assists, and again, it's one of those players that plays so advanced sometimes that you could kind of consider him a striker, but he was a midfielder with a moderate price, which meant if you had him at the right times, and you were getting him points for a player that wasn't costing you that much, which can be really important in FPL. And just to prove he is a point scorer for you, 2014-2015 season, he had 30 appearances, he got 4 goals and got 7 assists. Now that isn't as great as last season, but at least you know he's going to get you some points. Now, there's also a player that I've already done a player analysis on, on this channel. There'll be a card for it right now, which, so you can click and check that out. Player analysis is a series where I look at transfers mainly and see how those players can do at their new club and what their record was as far as getting goals, creating chances and all of that so you can make educated choices on players that maybe have never played in the Premier League before and you've never seen play. But one of the first player analysis I did was on Sadio Mane's transfer to Liverpool. Now I think this could be a great move for Liverpool, a great move for Sadio Mane and a great move for FPL players. Sadio Mane last season played 37 games. He got 11 goals and six assists, and he had a total of 86 attempts on goal, 68 of which came from inside the box. He is always getting in the box, looking to score those goals. Sadio Mane is also the player that got one of the quickest hat tricks in Premier League history. In the 2014-2015 season, he had 30 appearances, got 11 goals, three assists. So we know he's a player of pedigree where he can make stuff happen in games. The problem with Sadio Mane, which I do mention in my player analysis, is he can be very inconsistent, have really hot periods and then really cold periods where he doesn't do much. But I believe Jurgen Klopp can get the best out of Sadio Mane. He's the type of player that Jurgen Klopp loves. And I think we could be seeing Sadio Mane reach a new level. Next up, we have an FPL favorite, Gilfie Sigurdsson from Iceland that beat England in Euro 2016. I'm still bitter about that. Last season, Gilfie Sigurdsson had 36 appearances. He scored 11 goals though and got three assists, which is again a good return for a midfielder at his price. He had 88 attempts on goals and the plus side is he can be on penalties and in FPL, Players on penalties are great because if a side wins 10 penalties in a season, nine of them should go in, hopefully, and if he's taken all of them, that's nine goals you've got right there. Now, most teams don't get 10 penalties in a season, but that is just my example. In the 2014-2015 season, he had 32 appearances. He got seven goals and 10 assists in that. Again, a great return, and he's shown he can do it in more than one season. And then we have the sensation that was Deli Ali. Now Deli Ali last season was a very, very cheap midfielder and you could have brought him in as your fifth midfielder and then you had the problem of trying to figure out who not to place Deli Ali could. He had 33 appearances last season and he got 10 goals, nine assists, just short of that double figures in goals and assists. Had an absolutely amazing season and seems to have a great understanding with Harry Kane. Now unfortunately that disappeared for Euro 2016, but if it's still around in the Premier League, Harry Kane or Deli Ali could both be vital parts of your team. Anyway guys, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I hope you're enjoying 30 Days of FPL. I've been JNO, you've been awesome, and remember, it's all about the game.